Well, hey, here's my puppy striker, and he says thanks for joining us for another video. He's been barking outside and made me re restart this video, oh, 10 or 12 times. He's barking at uh, cars and things that come up the road and go past the house. Don't know what they're doing up here. I think they're going up to the lake or something, but they take the back ways in. But if he starts barking, I'll try to go through it unless he's too loud. But what I'm going to show you, I'm taking a little bit of a break from my uh, estate business here. I want to make a, I've been kind of busy, and so I haven't really been buying as much as I should have or like usual. Um, but I got a bunch of ephemera to show you. There's probably about uh, three things I'm only going to show you the backs of because uh, the fronts wouldn't be politically correct to show, and I don't want any problems with my channel, and I'm being sensitive to everybody uh, who might be tuning in today. Sorry for a jerky video. Dogs kind of want to get on the table with me. Um, so first off, let's start off with some ephemera, and I've got ephemera. And I've got, this is, abs when I show you these videos and I show you things that I have, um, it's because of, uh, I go into a lot of auctions I watch online and I'll start talking about things and I might say, I've got a box full of those or I've got a tote full of those. And that's honestly, you know, why I show this stuff is I do have so much stuff here and I have stuff that I'll never get to. I can make a video a day, three videos a day, and I can never cover the amount of ephemera that I have, because I've been collecting it since I was, oh, maybe five or six years old, uh, you know, postcards and things like that. Uh, I lived in a Bay Area in Monterey, California, had Fort Ord. So uh, we used to go to Monterey quite a bit just for uh, fishing or to the wharf or out to lunch for a day to play on the beach over there. And I'd see soldiers everywhere. So I'd make my mom and dad buy me postcards of Fort Ord soldiers, uh, and that's the day they used to. That's that's back in the day when they used to close off the the freeway, and they'd have the men march across the road to the uh, the sand pits to do their uh, weapons training, <laughs> and it was always such a such a good show to watch those men marching across the road. Unfortunately, they were going off to Vietnam, so I'm sure there's a lot of unhappy endings there to be told. Uh, but let's move on. Quickly, it's enough uh, childhood reminiscence. Let me get the ones that are controversial out of the way. Um, this is an advertisement piece from the late 1800s. I'd say 1880s or, or so. It's for the Ayers Pills. Now, unfortunately, they've trimmed a little bit of the top off, possibly at one time to uh, put in a frame. Now, oh, sorry, I almost turned that over. Hopefully nobody saw that. Um <laughs> It just has a man holding his granddaughter or little baby on his knee. Ayers aspirin. Um, so used to turning things over. Um, probably five years ago, I got a bunch of these really stiff plastic top loaders for baseball cards. I mean, I had cases and cases of them. I've sold them all off now. But I kept several hundred to put smaller items like this in, keep them from bending, and to put my military patches in, the ones that I couldn't put in frames. <laughs> and hold on. Oh, that's going to be another video. Um, a lot of people think they have patches. <laughs> uh, I'll show the ones that I can't display. Um, now, this one isn't controversial. This is a nice piece here. The Chaz H. Moore Oil Company, Cincinnati, Ohio, from 1908. Now, take a look at the ladies' fashions back then. At least... Um, the top portion here is what you can see. Uh, very elegantly dressed young lady. Uh, <clears throat> but it's a calendar. It's also a postcard. So you can take that and send it to whomever you wish. We have our next piece right here. I won't show you the front of this because it's something I think it, it might offend somebody. I don't want to offend anybody. I just want viewers to come on here and learn some things and, and enjoy themselves with uh, being all this lockdown stuff. It gives them something to look at. And it also lets people know this stuff is out there. When we're ever able to go back out and look for it, we're going to find all this stuff waiting for us. 
uh, we can go out limited right now. And I do find a lot of things on Facebook Marketplace and little local collector groups that are on Facebook. And I have things shipped to me. I also attend only two auctions right now that are on YouTube. One is from Mike at the January House. And the other is Mike at Global Voodoo. But Mike has a partner that comes on with him. Uh, he does estate sale businesses too. He's a really nice guy, John Raver, who brings cool items. They have a lot of ephemera. Lately, there's been too many people on there that really like it too. And I've got so much, I don't like to outbid people. And unless it's something I really want, then I'll outbid them. Try to, at least. <laughs> you know, I don't want to go overboard, but sometimes I can't help myself. But anyway, those guys have some great auctions. You ought to check them out. Um, and for some of this other stuff, I think I have some photos in here. There's some people in Saskatchewan, Canada, uh, in the city of Regina, that uh, Mark and Karen Barron have the bargain barons. You could tell them Sean or Bear Flag Mercantile sent you. Please check them out. They got a good following. Those guys are so cool. And if you want to see the amazing things that's found outside of the U.S. in Canada... Man, there's some, they, they come up with some amazing stuff. They collect old photographs and things that they can use in their in their show house. They have, their house was made like 1920s and stuff. And they're the ones who actually got me inspired to start making videos uh, just from watching them all the time. And then I start watching these other guys, Global Voodoo and the January House, and I see all the stuff they're doing. And, and, and you know, that they, they've, I've, I've learned a lot from those guys. And uh, Art Vandalay, also here on YouTube, uh, Hemlock Lady has auctions also. Doing all these shout-outs, I have 31 subscribers, which is perfect. I had none when I first started, of course. <laughs> but to jump up like that, and it's just from being on their channels and being around. And that's not why I go on their channels. I go on their channel because they're great people. And, and and I like to support local businesses. And, and uh, even though they're not local, they're still local to me on the Internet. But anyways, let's get back to this. I can't show you the front, but... The back has this lovely lady on it. Uh, it's a lithograph. But what it does, I'm not going to fold it out too much, but it folds out into a crepe paper, I believe that's what you call this stuff, crepe paper fan. And it's French. You know, it's from the late 1800s. I, well, yeah, I guess 1880s would be considered kind of late 1800s. But that's cool. Being very careful not to show you the front. If anybody wants me to email them the photo, you can get in touch with me at uh, estate sales enterprises at gmail.com. And I'll send you pictures of the fronts if you want, but it's only by request. I'm not going to, you know, it's nothing exciting or nothing dirty. Uh, you know, I these kids, uh, these, these videos kids can watch. Um, I've gotten some things together here that I pulled out of my magic box. No telling what's going to come out of here. It's been a while since I put things in it. So first off, well, not first off, it's first off with photo. I said, I'm sorry about this glare. Hopefully you don't have snow blindness after this. But uh, two World War I soldiers. Uh, there we go. Photo's kind of fading. There's no uh, attributes on it. I don't know who these men are. Other than it came with this letter. There's a letter inside here i'm not going to take out i don't like unfolding paper too much and this is 1918 and this is private i believe fj quirk maybe you're better at reading the older uh, cursive than i am i don't know what's going on with my camera unless it's a ghost blurring my camera but he was a battery e 35th regiment field artillery and he was in alabama and this went to a miss Mary Quirk. So it's uh, in Buffalo, New York. It was his wife or mother. Could have been. We'll never know. But uh, the photo is just general military things. Or not, not photo. The letter. The letters. Uh, I don't want to break it out because it's. you can see how the, the envelope is. That's the same way the letter is. It's just. I don't know if it's on camp letterhead. It's War Activities League. From Knights of Columbus. They did a lot of good things, Knights of Columbus, as far as for soldiers and things. But it had this photo inside of it. And, and I'm pretty sure it's the guy that was in the... One of the guys, or both the guys that were in the fold out here. They're just on... Uh, it's like a parade. There's people watching them 
right there, civilians. Okay, okay. Uh, love to see that flag, man. That that 48 star flag's longest service flag in so far. 48 stars. I have several 48 stars uh, flags. I said that wrong. 48 star flags. Um, that stays in my collection. Doesn't leave. Uh, I'm gonna get those in frames. I have to get them mounted. These are just like many projects I have. I have this pretty cool book here, the Treasury Department, and these were sent out to local uh, police departments um, about knowing your money. This will show you how. To, well, it shows you right here. Know how to how to know counterfeit money. What to do about it. How to guard against forged government checks. Treasury Department. Secret Service. How do we know they're a service if they're a secret? Don't know. Uh, this is dated 1946. And there's no kind of... Uh, any kind of classified information in here. Most of the information is out of date. I bought it. You know, you have the... Buy and hold United States savings bonds growing together. This is all stuff for after post World War II. Uh, tells you about the penalties, even tells you about uh, counterfeit coins. Some of the counterfeit coin information is really good information. It's illustrated, and I really like that. Um, they did a lot of work getting this publication together, and uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, oops, there's another item I can't show you, but I can show you this. Be sure you get real standard screw fashion shoes, boots, boots and shoes. They outwear all others. She's got a nice little girl. Looks like she's praying, but it turns out she's begging. My papa is going to buy me a pair of standard screw fashion shoes. He says they are the best in the world. And then, uh, yeah, I paid a big two bucks for this. Uh, Look out for imitations. Those look like some pretty pretty good shoes. Boot shoes and slippers and rubber and rubbers. Not what you think. Get your mind out of the gutter. That was for uh, I can't show you this postcard. But it's a nice postcard. See the back? Unused. Uh, then we go into oh wait, on the bottom of these. Then we'll start getting into the box. These are the type of things that I collect. Now, if I ever see these on an auction site for sale, people are going to get a run for their money because these are the ones that I love, uh, the Americana type. I've got a wall full of uh, framed postcards, all with the American flags, different years. But this is something they would have given to a soldier. Uh, your cause is mine. May this single card remind you that you've left some friends behind you. Friends who think of you with yearning, hoping for your safe returning. It's unused. And it's just that it's nice. You know, they had they had classy stuff back then. But anything with a vivid colors like that of the American flag, uh, I'm gonna get. <laughs> you know, and I know if someone will be watching this, take that as a challenge. But, you know, and that's why I don't bid a lot on ephemera on auctions. Um, I have a lot of it, and I'm running out of space to store it. So unless it's something really special or something that just strikes my fancy at the moment, I, I won't buy it. I might bid on it, hoping it'll stay low, but I know it won't. <laughs> um, but uh, John Raver and Mike from January House, I haven't already mentioned, I can't remember, I've had to reshoot this several times because the dogs kind of runs together. But Mike and John have some great items. Global Voodoo has some great items that come up. Now, this postcard it was an old birthday card from uh, who embossed 1909, and that just came with some items. I don't like separating them. Then I have more ration books, three. Those are full. Those aren't too exciting. I won't open those up. Uh, they also had with them some red OPA coins. These are made out of pressed board, kind of like cardboard. Uh, 
and I got three, four of those, and I got some pennies. 1943 copper penny? No, it's steel. 43 steel. And this other one, I wish it was a copper 1943 penny. Or what was the other mistake penny that was steel? If I look those up. Oh. Nineteen forty-three. Those are always interesting. I always buy those. Um, oh, 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 oh! Look at this here. This is a cool photo. Almost that that fell in between some other items. It's kind of blurry. There's no name on the back, but I got a little plastic protector. Uh, the man's wearing a bedroll, and these are ones I just keep put away so they don't degrade from uh, uh, sunlight. I also. Got some really cool signed costume jewelry, except for this and this. These are sterling uh, filigree bow with a little bangle on the end of it there. And these are purple glass. I'm assuming they're, they're, they're glass. They're see-through. I think they're glass. But they're still very nice uh, early 1900s uh, when women started to get the pierced ears. Uh, usually they were screw-ons. Uh, some other kind of little Santa Claus pen, a rose pen, a brooch, and some screw-on earrings, with some purple stones and rhinestones. And then, yeah, come on. In. Okay. My youngest son came out taking a break. So we have some Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. Um, Popcorn and peanut bags. These are hard to find. Uh, I've never seen them before. These, these were kind of like the ones that John Raver, not John Raver didn't have these, but he had some, I think, Dairy Queen cups or something from the 50s. That's what the, that's when these are from, 50s. I got some backed and boarded. I might, no, I can't use that for something else. But uh, we got these. These are going to be for sale. I don't know how much yet. I got to do some looking for those. But these are cool. These are in mint condition. And these are wax or like, yeah, kind of like, I don't know what you call it. Really thin paper. Uh, I'm no expert with that stuff, but they're old. I uh, got a little plastic uh, gas station related Pegasus flying. I can't remember what it's from. I feel I got memory loss right now. <laughs> I got so much I'm thinking about. Um, I got some more coins. 19 V nickel. Uh, I keep these. A uh, friend of mine that passed away gave them to me. Uh, so, another yeah, war penny, 1943. And I got an Indian head penny, 1902. And I think I'm going to, um, as I keep going down this box, discover a stack of Indian head pennies. And if anybody's into um, old nickels, from 30s, 40s, 50s, I have envelopes, envelopes full of those that I got at an auction. They're not uh, special to me that I would be willing to part with. Okay, next. Oh, these are cool. These are some of my paper money. that I ran out of room. I had to switch them. Hard to find items. Not this. Oh, these are Indonesian. Bills. I remember I got those in Lake Tahoe probably about 15 years ago. But they're all in mint condition. 1964. And I got these. These these are harder to turn up. Um, more so than the American money. And these are uh, British. 50 new pence. Pay currency. Military pay currency. And uh, I can't find a Six series. I can't remember when these were used. Um, we have a one pound note right there. One pound issued by command of the Army Council. Again, it's third series. We have another new pence. 
right here. Oh, we're going to run into some good stuff right here. Somewhere within one of these folders, I had the currency albums. So that was the military commercial. Now we have some Vietnamese items. A friend of mine used to go visit Vietnam every year and would bring me back a whole bunch of good items from Vietnam. Uh, I haven't seen him in a long time. I believe he passed away. I moved and lost contact with him, but he was a man I bought military stuff from since I was like uh, a kid. And he was in Vietnam. His wife uh, was Vietnamese, so they went to visit family and things. Uh, this one... I believe this one. If, if not, I'll point it out later on. This was a counterfeit bill that uh, was made by the United States, like a psyops thing where they were trying to demonetize uh, Vietnamese money, which was worth nothing anyways. So it was a uh, it was a counterfeit bill that was passed around. And we have some uh, Cambodian currency right here. And then let's see, what's this one? No, don't want to show that one. Then we have some uh, a Mexican bill. That's really not worth much. I just, I, I'll tell you what, probably about uh, 15 years ago, I bought at ANA Auctions. Oh boy. It was a very large toolbox full of loose coins and a mailbag full of bills, currency. Now, a lot of them I have in frames and they're still put away. I'm trying to get them out. Uh, Little by little. But then we get into some Chinese currency. And that's what was in... Most of these bills I have came from that lot. Some Chinese currency. Um, 10 yuan right here. Central Bank of China. These are 20s and 30s bills. 1920s. Um, printed by American Bank Company. And uh, I think some of them have... I don't know. My uncle... Ah, uh, this is from Shanghai. Five dollars, Shanghai, nineteen thirty. There we go. Um, the Japanese hostility was in China at that time too, so we were starting to take interest and come to aid them. Uh, Shanghai, and this is nineteen forty Chinese. Anyway, my uncle was in Vietnam. He was in the Navy. And he uh, was on USS Nimitz. And uh, he collected a lot of this stuff, too, when he was over. That's in a different collection. But he brought home a lot. He was knowledgeable, but he's being kind of jerky and won't talk to me anymore. So we just avoid him and don't ask him about any of this stuff. But anyways, <laughs> this money always makes me think of him, though. Uh, there's another Shanghai bill. I believe that's from the 40s as well. The 40s was pretty hostile there in China with uh, the Japanese, 30s and 40s. And, uh, you know, I can't go into too much detail. I know about these, but, you know, they, they are what they are. And uh, I'm not getting rid of them anytime soon. So I'm, I'm not really worried about putting values on them. I know what they're worth. Uh, that's from 1935. And just some more. Yes, yeah, some of it's going to be upside down. That's the way I'm holding my camera and flipping them up here. Ooh, Canadian bill. I remember this one. Uh, when is that from? 76, I believe. I tore it. But I got that in Canada when I was a kid. Uh, just going to visit. Uh, you know, he's got a bunch of other foreign bills. Clinton. <laughs> See, even if they're kind of messed up, I still get them. Uh, you know, 57. And the, <laughs> there's one of the Clinton bills. I don't even know why I have that. But, uh, yeah. Take a look at some of these. Some French or Italian Liras. Another $2 coin. French, 
Uh, let me move some of these out of the way. I'm going to keep uh, it's a little bit longer video than I'm used to doing. I've got a lot of stuff to look at. I might make this two videos. Um, then I got this little plastic thing full of more Chinese money. I have a lot of that uh, with that lot that I bought. I still had a lot. Uh, here we go. Here's some more U.S. pay currency. This stuff's going to date World War II. Some of it to Korean War. Uh, two bills. I fit two bills in each little sleeve. Uh, Chinese again. There. Uh, there's some more Chinese bills. Now these, uh, honestly, if I if I were to look at them, uh, this is another Canadian one. There's some more military pay. And there's another one on this side. More American military. These were some invasion currencies. Japanese government. This is when they were set to take over the Philippines. This is the money that they would print. And uh, instead of using the indigenous money, they would use their own currency. They did take over the Philippines. So those, some of those were in use. That, of course, isn't. It's upside down. Um, there's another one. Ten centavos. Another one. And there's some more... U.S. military pay in the back of that. Nah, I take that back for that one I was telling you about, the Vietnamese one. This one here. It's upside down. This is the counterfeit bill. These are extremely hard to find. And when you do find them, they're worth some money. Not a whole lot, but they're worth something, worth keeping. And more encourage, uh, encouraging money. Yeah, money is encouraging. Invasion currency with American pay currency mixed in the backs of them. Uh, Canadian. I, I went to Canada a lot. Uh, more Chinese. Another military pay. Some more Vietnamese items. Oh, those are the ones that started off with. So we have those. And you know what? I'm going to stop this video right here. And we'll be back in just a moment with more stuff so this is part one come on back check out part two because look at that box hasn't even been touched yet so come on back help me look through things see you in a minute